Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I certainly give God praise for another opportunity to break the bread of life with you uh, today. I'm certainly uh, giving God praise uh, for his goodness and his mercy toward us. Uh, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Uh, certainly, uh, I thank uh, God for each and every one of you that uh, like, that share, uh, or just simply enjoy uh, a break two, verses 31 through 34. And the word of the Lord reads like this, and I'm reading it from the King James Version. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And the Bible says, and he said, Jesus is talking, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Uh, again, the power, the power of the intercessor. Uh, God bless you, Mother Taylor. Uh, my brother, God bless you, Minister Price. I am excited about Sunday, sir. Uh, certainly, I uh, want to thank God for these scriptures. Very familiar. I'm sure you've heard it preached many times. I'm sure you've heard it uh, taught many times, but uh, I, I want to go a little bit deeper uh, into the scriptures as to what they are saying to us and revealing to us about the power of intercession. Uh, first of all, uh, that word prayed in the Strong's Greek is it's number 1189, and it means the thing asked for, the thing asked for. Uh, one of the beautiful things about uh, Christ uh, and what he did for us, uh, he allowed us to be able to come boldly before the throne of grace and ask God for what it is that we want. Um, it's a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous honor and privilege that we have. As a matter of fact, one of our evangelists uh, uh, at our church will often say she thanks God for the privilege of prayer. Uh, it, it is such uh, um, uh, an important part of every Christian's life. But sometimes I think the, the efficacy of prayer is sometimes lost. Uh, I will give you a, a very quick example because I can certainly speak for myself. Uh, how many times have you prayed for something and because it didn't happen immediately, uh, you began to question whether or not you were heard? Uh, how many times have you prayed for something and because it didn't happen immediately, uh, did you question, does God, uh, uh, is God withholding this from me? Uh, but the scripture will let us know that no good thing will I withhold from them that walk uprightly before me. Sometimes uh, we have to learn patience. Even though we prayed about something, we have to be patient enough to wait for it. Now, I'm not doing a class tonight on waiting, but it's critical when you're talking about prayer. Uh, it'll give you it'll give you strength when you remember that 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 wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There is, there is a power in prayer, uh, 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 but you develop through your waiting. There is a power in prayer, but, but you become a, a, a stronger saint in God when you know how to wait. In other words, where the power comes from is when your faith uh, uh, is activated through your prayer life. So even though I don't see it because I asked my father for it and we have relationship, I'm expecting it to come when it's the right time. One thing I love about God is he will not give you anything before it is the right time. There are so many things that I'm so glad he didn't give it to me when I wanted it because it would have thrown me off course. There, there are so many things that I remember asking God that, that he gave me later on when I could handle it. Uh, brothers and sisters, something that you, some things that you pray for, believe it or not, you are not ready yet to handle 
but but I thank God that 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 he knows enough about me not to give me something that I can't handle before the time I thank God that that his wisdom uh, that is unsearchable he he uses it in my life to make sure that I don't overstep where I should be. This is why Paul said, I went to the Lord three times, but 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 this thing was still in me. And he said to me that my grace is sufficient. I wouldn't know, thank you, Lord, about sufficient grace if he gave me everything I wanted when, when I wanted it. But I need to understand that even if I don't receive what it is that I've asked for right away, that his grace is still, am I said, his grace is still sufficient. His, his, his grace is still operating even though I don't see it I still have the grace to go to go through it brothers and sisters brothers and sisters what Jesus did for us through the cross was he put us back into right standing so that we could come into the presence of God. Aren't you glad that he went to the cross to allow you to come into his presence? You remember in the Old Testament, you could not just approach the Ark of the Covenant. You had to be sanctified and consecrated before you could come into the presence of God. But I'm so thankful that that, that when that veil was rent from the top to the bottom. He was allowing us to be able to approach the throne with, with our prayer. The Bible lets us know. I got to move on here. Isaiah chapter number 53, verse number 12. I'll read it very quickly. It says, therefore will I divide him a portion, talking about Jesus, with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. One of the wonderful things about our God is that he is the ultimate prayer partner. Mm, he is the ultimate prayer partner. You will not find a better prayer partner than Jesus the Christ. You will not find somebody that knows what you need before you even ask like our Jesus. The Bible lets us know in Romans, uh, and I'm going to get to the point here, Romans chapter number 8, verses 34 uh, uh, through 37, it says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And then the scripture says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Because he's making intercession, who will separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, but because of the great intercessor, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Aren't you glad that even though you don't have everything that you want, you are still more than a conqueror? Aren't you glad that even though you haven't seen everything that will be, you are more than a conqueror. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. Understand Brothers and sisters, I know that the scriptures say we overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. There, then were the days uh, of unleavened bread. And the Bible said, and when he had apprehended him, in other words, when he had captured Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. A whole lot of soldiers to keep one man intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept. The Bible says he was kept in prison, but prayer. He was kept in prison, 
but prayer. He was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God for him. Let me stop here for just a minute and remind you, brothers and sisters, this is a scripture. These are scriptures for us today. So many of our friends and our family members are kept in prison. So many people that we love are kept in prison, but our response ability is to pray without ceasing for those that are kept in prison because as you pray for those that are kept in prison. Look at what the Bible says will take place. The Bible says, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night was Peter sleeping between two soldiers. He was bound with two chains and the keepers before the door of the prison. But because there was prayer kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. The Bible says in verse number seven, and behold, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. Aren't you glad that your prayers will cause the light to shine in somewhere that's dark? Aren't you glad that your prayers will cause the angels of the Lord to go somewhere that's dark to release somebody? The Bible said, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hands. How did the chains fall off? You would say it was because of the angel, but may I submit to you, brothers and sisters, the reason why the angel was there was because prayer was made without ceasing. You can't put the cart before the horse. It is important to understand that because we pray, that's what causes angels to go forth. Because we pray, that's what causes miracles to happen because we pray. This is why the Bible reminds us men ought always to pray and not faint. It's so important because your prayers are operating even when, even when you don't see it. Let's go on to another place. Matthew chapter number 17, verse number one through three, very, very familiar passage of scripture. You remember the Bible says, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Brothers and sisters, I did not see this before. I know from a theological perspective, you would say Moses would would represent uh, uh, those that 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 die and are and are resurrected. Elijah represents those that will be caught up in the rapture. I know uh, of the theological principles behind the scriptures, but 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 look a little bit deeper. We understand that Moses was the one when the children of Israel will get out of line that would fall on his face before the Lord. You remember, I'll read just a little of it. Numbers chapter number 14. You remember uh, verse number 11. It was, it, was, it was God that said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be air? Meaning before they believe me for all the signs which I have shown among them. Let me just stop here and remind somebody. If the Lord has shown you signs and miracles, now is not the time to not believe him. I, I, that's meant for somebody. Now is not the time for you to stop believing that God is able. But the Bible says, he says, I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. So here he is telling Moses, I will take out of your loins and make me Another people that will be greater than they that 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 will believe that will that will hold on to my hand. But but here is Moses, and Moses says unto God, the Egyptians. Then the Egyptians, uh, Lord, shall hear of it. 
for thou brought us up this people in thy might from among them and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land for they have heard how the Lord was among his people and, and understand uh, you can go back and read that numbers chapter number 14 but understand what he was saying to God is listen you brought us out with a mighty hand and if you destroy this people here is Moses interceding uh, uh, interceding by the way brothers and sisters mean somebody that will intervene for someone else especially with prayer uh, the Bible lets us know that Moses is now interceding for the people saying Lord don't do this because these people these Egyptians will say that the Lord was not able that was powerful and Moses is uh, interceding for the people he said he said I know Lord that you're able to do what you're saying but but if you do this the Egyptians are going to say that you weren't able all those miracles and all those great things that you did they're going to say that you weren't able and and it caused God to respond to him and and, and not do what he was uh, de deciding to do understand brothers and sisters your prayer can change the way some things would take place. Your prayer can change situations. Don't, don't you want to be so close to God that you can ask him for something that looks like it's supposed to go one way and he turns it into another? Aren't you glad that you can go to your God and ask for something and he begins to turn it a different way than it was supposed to be. I'm so glad that our prayer moves our God to do great things. And the Bible Let's just know, you know the story, looking at the life of Elijah. Uh, uh, he is the one in James chapter number five, verses 17 and 18. Elias talking about Elijah was the man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Look at what the Bible tells us. He prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly and the Bible, the Bible, the Bible is showing us something that not only does Moses and Elijah uh, represent resurrection. I understand again the, the, the theology behind that. I understand that but also brothers and sisters it is showing us that those that have a prayer life those that are close to him can always talk to Jesus. Notice on the transfiguration day on that mountain what the Bible is telling us that Moses and Elijah had relationship so they were always able to talk to Jesus. Aren't you glad that our prayer life gives us the access? to talk to Jesus. Aren't you glad that your prayer life gives you the access to talk to the master? Aren't you glad that your relationship that is developed through prayer gives you access to Jesus Christ? And then Brothers and sisters, and I will get out of the way, James chapter number 5, verse number 18. There's a very powerful, powerful principle in scripture here. The Bible says after verse 17 that Elias prayed and, and, and that it might not rain on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Then the Bible says, and he prayed again. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. What the Lord told me to tell somebody is to go back and pray again. Thank you, Lord. He wants somebody to go back and pray again. You are waiting for something and you've decided in yourself that is not going to happen. The Lord wanted me to tell you to go back and pray again. Why should I go back and pray, Associate Pastor GT? Why should I go back and pray? Here is what I want to reveal to you. We know 
that there was a body prepared before the foundation of the world. We know that God's wisdom and his understanding and his knowledge is beyond our comprehension. The Bible says in one place as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts than your thoughts and, and my ways than your ways. But, but understand, brothers and sisters, what Jesus wanted me to remind you is that he is standing on the right hand of the throne of God. What does that mean? Whatever it is that you're praying for, Jesus has already talked to God about it. Whatever it is, thank you, Lord, that you need. Thank you, Lord. Whatever it is that you need, he is already talking to God about it. So don't let him just talk to God on your behalf. He wants you to pray also this is why he would ask a blind man what is it that you want I know you need your sight but I want relationship tell me about your trouble this is what he is looking for from us brothers and sisters go back and pray again go back and pray for that unsaved loved one go back and pray for that son of that daughter that you won't save. Go back and pray for those that seem like they're lost because he is yet praying for you. The beautiful part, brothers and sisters, about being an intercessor, a beautiful part about being an intercessor, while you are yet praying for somebody else, Jesus is always praying for you. Your needs will be met because you are taking somebody else to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord. One of the things that he shows us in scripture. He says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask for what you will and it shall be done unto you. We are, we are word seekers these days. Everybody, everybody is trying to get trying to get a word from the Lord. We we are those that are looking for God to do things, but we miss the premise of the scripture. If I abide in you and you abide in me, we're abiding when we have relationship. You have the Holy Ghost. We're abiding. You have your word, his word, rather, working on the inside of you. But the key is prayer because he said, ask for what you will and it shall be done unto you. Ask. You are abiding with the Holy Ghost. You have the word down on the inside. But have you asked? <laughs> have you prayed about what it is that you need from the Lord? Scriptures even tell us in other places something as simple as, If any man lack wisdom, what is he supposed to do? Let him ask of God. <laughs> we need to pray more. We need, and I'm talking to myself too, we need to pray more because he's looking for us to ask so that he then can operate. But ask me, why was Jesus walking around saying, what can I do for you? What is it that you need? Lord, I know you can heal me. I got leprosy. I will be thou clean. <laughs> but you have to, you have to, you have to get yourself in position. Being an intercessor, and I'll get out of the way, I'm through. Being an intercessor positions you differently in God. Jesus shows us that example. Where is Jesus? On the right hand of God. What is he doing? on God's right hand where the power is, I'm making intercession. That's the power of an intercessor. You are positioned for the right hand of God to move in somebody's life. You are positioned for the power of God to move in somebody's life. That is where the power is when you are standing in the place of an intercessor. 
We have to get to the place where I'm trusting God. Yes, yes, brothers and sisters, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Yes, yes, we should be asking. But we should always be praying for somebody else. Time is getting short. We got to call somebody else's name out. My pastor told us one time when somebody comes across your mind when you're praying, pray for them. That is God giving you the signal to pray for them. Brothers and sisters, I'm through. I pray, I pray that something was said that would encourage you, that would strengthen you. It is prayer time. It is prayer time. It is prayer time. It's time to start interceding for these things. If my people called by my name would humble themselves and to pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal and heal the land. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. If the Lord says the same, I will see you next Tuesday for a moment in scripture. Continue to pray for me as I continue to pray for you. I love you in Jesus' name.